Okay. Mm. All right. So we get started. Okay. All right. So welcome, DJ and Lucretia. Um, today, we're going to be talking to you all about your journey uh, from singleness to engagement and marriage and all of that stuff. But I really want to start with you all's mindset uh, while you were single. Um, so Lucretia, I understand that you were a virgin um, yes. mm -hmm. before you got married. Yes. And then I think you recommitted your life back to Christ. Um, is that what your testimony was, DJ? Yes. Okay. Yes, so, I, so I love to hear about where each of you all, all were in your mindsets before you met each other. And then we can go more into detail about how you met a little bit later. Yeah. Um. For me, like before meeting him, I would say I was in a rejuvenated state. Um. My single season within my single season, it was just ups and downs. And, um, I have dated, you know, um, men and it was just a lot. And, and dating online is a whole nother journey than just dating, you know, meeting somebody in the supermarket. And it's just, it's a whole process. And I could tell you that with all of that, I was exhausted, but even before that, I could say that is a story I, I usually tell you know especially when I coach women it's I didn't imagine marriage for me so when you don't see marriage you date differently you know and you you don't date with the intention in mind or I didn't see me being a wife it was hard to see that because for me you know I had dealt with self-esteem issues and all the things and so growing up and it, it was it, it took a journey for me to even get there and I should say that if it wasn't for my mom really pouring into me during those times in my single season leading up to meeting him, I probably wouldn't be married now. And so mm -hmm. she kind of confronted me at a time when I was, you know, doing my thing. You know, I was all career focused. I had all my thing, you know, my, my nonprofit business going. I had my my career was jumping. I have my own little studio apartment. Like I was living mm -hmm. the life that I said. I was like, this is it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I remember she came to me and she was like, is this it really? And I was like, yeah, what you talking about? She said, well, I'm going to tell you this. If things don't change, meaning relationship or even things that's going on in your life right now, I want you to move back home to California with us. And I, and I thought about it, I was like, okay, cool. You know, I'll do that because nothing was really, it was kind of at a good place, but nothing, like nothing changed, you know? And so, um, so I could say that that was where something happened. That moment <laughs> it was where it was like, things started progressing and moving in my life towards thinking about love and desiring marriage. God pl then planted that. So I could say, I know that's long story short, Leading up to him, um, it was a rejuvenated state. I I was, because the desire came, I then started to date, which then mean I had to meet more men, which mean that's where I got exhausted. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so before him, I had took a, took a pause and, um, and, um, and then that's when I decided to dive back online, um, right before meeting him. Mm -hmm. So, and that's when I met him was when I decided I took that, that, that pause and then um I decided to go ahead and take that leap of faith and go back in online dating okay uh so before I move on to you DJ I think we need to dig into that a little bit more um okay. so so <laughs> you were saying that um you didn't see yourself married so what did what exactly did that look like not seeing yourself married and I know you said your mom stepped in and I guess that's where the mm -hmm. shift took place but you mm -hmm. did mention like you have some self-esteem issues and things mm -hmm. of that nature. Did you just hide those issues behind the career or did you actually unravel those things? Mm. At first I did. I, I said, so since, th since love, finding love, a long-term love, isn't what I see in the future. Well, you know what I could hold on to? I could hold on to my career. You know, I've, I've always been that overachiever um, high achiever and always felt that that's where I got my praise and reward from. So if I can't get the relationship thing, right, I mm -hmm. know I can get this career thing, right. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so I know I can get this business thing, right. So let me just go ahead and go dive in deep all in there. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I would see people in my life get married and, you know, I knew that's what God mm -hmm. would want for me, you know, because if I, if I tended to, I felt like that was a thing, like, okay, you in your late twenties, you know, you got to get married somehow. So that's what I, it was just, it was never a desire 
for me, but it was like, eventually I probably would, but if I don't, oh well, you know, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. that's how I felt. So that's what I, I would say. But yeah, I did dive, I did do more. I, I dove more into all the things I knew I would get praise and reward from, which was just, so if I did all the good things, just like I did growing up, you mm-hmm. know, living as a child in my college days, all the things, then I know that, you know what, nobody would mess with me here. I know mm-hmm. that nothing would happen. But then when my mom confronted me, it was like, oh, here she goes again. But it was a here she goes again. But wait a minute, you're right. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, you're right. I, mm-hmm. I get it, Bob. you know, so, mm-hmm. yeah. And I think so many women deal with that, especially African-American women, uh, mm-hmm. because of the challenges and the things that we deal with in the media that's mm-hmm. often painting an image of us um, that may not be true. Uh, yeah. Do you uh, have experience feeling invisible at all during that time? And maybe someone will see you when mm-hmm. you're successful in other areas and potentially marry you then? or You mean like a man or like a... Um... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not really. I would say more so I, I, it wasn't like I, I don't think I wanted to be seen, Mm -hmm. you know, like Mm -hmm. when I say I dealt with self-esteem issues and especially, um, one reason why, and I touch on this a lot with Christian women is because I was never taught how to handle myself as a Christian single woman that wants to date. It Mm -hmm. was never a thing that was taught. And Mm -hmm. so in my mind, it was like, well, if he's going to come, then he's going to come. I don't Mm -hmm. have to do anything, you know, kind of deal. And so, so yeah, I just felt like, you know, maybe if this is, if this is the thing, then he's going to pop up somewhere kind of deal. It wasn't, I didn't know that Mm -hmm. I had to actually work on myself. I didn't know that there were things that I needed to work on to make sure that I was attracting, you know, the man that I would think about kind of deal. So, um, so I, I don't think it was a thought. It was more so I just another thing is like for me um because I wasn't ever taught that I didn't Mm -hmm. never know how to have conversations you know communicate correctly with men men Mm -hmm. to me you know they could be friends but if you were attracted to me I would Mm -hmm. ought to be like oh he's attracted to me like oh I don't know what to do like you know it was yeah I've been there I don't know what to do like do I talk uh, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah you know, or, I need a second to figure this out that's what yeah, I need a second to figure this out. <laughs> or it could be it could be a, a just he could be like I remember there was time though he was a greeter at the church and no he was working in the parking lot actually I'm at the church and he just complimented me on what I was wearing and to me it seemed odd I'm like he's complimenting me on what I'm like he said oh you look nice today sis and I'm like oh thank you bro you know kind of thing but I was thought about <laughs> it and I'm like wait a minute. And so it's because you don't get that, you know, or you don't know what to do with that. And it's just simple. It was a simple compliment. It was nothing else than that, but Mm -hmm. you don't know how to, you don't know what to do with those things. And I think we have to learn what, what everything means and what, you know, what does that mean? If he just, Mm -hmm. if he just says hello, or even if he was to flirt, what would I do Mm -hmm. then? I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, Uh Yeah. So, so I'm glad you brought up so many good points, you know, Mm -hmm. and I think the lack of experience Mm -hmm. um, from women not knowing what to do can be interpreted by men Mm -hmm. that we're not Mm -hmm. interested, you know, and that's when they start looking past us and ignoring us. And then we start feeling invisible, you know, Mm -hmm. and then Mm -hmm. sometimes when you go to the older women, they tell you stuff like, well, Ruth was working in the field and she was working. So you got to work that that passion and whatever God right. gave you to do. And then mm-hmm. he's going to see you in the field. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I exactly. think that's where that comes from. And that's then it it's is. just going to automatically come together, you know, mm-hmm. without practicing, you know, mm-hmm. and talking to people. So you made so many good points. Um, yeah. But I want to go over to DJ for the men folk. Uh, men folk. Follow me. So I would love to hear what was your mindset? And then also what caused the shift? you know, to have you to recommit yourself back uh, to the Lord and, you know, start doing things God's way as it relates to relationships. Whew. So we got to go two years prior of meeting you. So All right. Yes. Um, <laughs> so basically, uh, I was at that time working security and it was kind of like uh, a very mundane, very uninventful life happening. I was just go to work, come home play video games same thing just 
constantly and then at one point i was just like you know what this gotta be something else like i'm i'm tired like i, I just want to you know do something else i don't know what so i was just like you know what i i do i do love god you know but i never really fully like could admit myself to god like i never experienced that it was like why not like everybody's always oh you know god this god that it's like well let me just go ahead and try the full commitment let me let me do that and under my choice not where either my parents is bringing me to church or you know somebody's inviting me to church like yeah i'll go but that was more like because you asked me to or you had me go like that's not my choice but this time it was my choice and once i did that it was just like it was like a bowling ball (laughs) it just kept going and going um i end up uh let's see joining my my dad's church one me and him was kind of like on rocky and we was kind of healing from past issues that we had Mm -hmm. so right then and there we was like just hanging out more talking more talking about god more i think i went through discipleship like twice already (laughs) what it felt like (laughs) and um kind of like just everything was moving so fast but it i was I don't know if you've ever seen the movie uh, Yes Man with Jim Carrey. I was basically being Yes Man for God. Like, everything that was happening, like, oh, yeah. Yes, God. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. I'll right do on. it. Right on. I'm uncomfortable <laughs> with it, but I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Um. The The biggest uncomfortable moment was the church had called me looking for my dad, but we both got the same name. Mm-hmm. And they was like, hey, you want to be captain of the greeter team? I was like, oh. No, it's just higher than what I thought it would be. Sure, I'll do that. <laughs> I go to a meeting. It's seventy people that I've got to be over. Like I, I can't. I, I, I okay, God, I'll do it. But <laughs> this is the first time I had to manage seventy people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and they oh, knew. Wait, wait, hold like, on, hold on. Let me stop you. This sounds like the Bible. Garden. You you remember how Adam was given the garden before mm-hmm. he got Eve? Okay, now okay, okay, yep, okay, yep, yep, okay. Yep, yep. okay. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, 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 right don't worry. Right, right. Trust me, I, I, my daddy still calls me the prodigal son. I'm like, okay, then. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, being being over that was definitely outside my comfort zone because I don't like talking to people. So <laughs> I had to talk to everybody, everybody, and pray. Look at you. Look and at you. pray. Was in training, <laughs> man. And so doing all that w- was like leading up to mm-hmm. meeting my wife here. Or Aww. more like her hollering at yes. me. Yes. Um, because during that time, I was I wasn't worried about dating. I was yeah. just following God, doing my own thing, mm. having a good old time. And um, <laughs> I say this all the time. Basically, me and my dad went on a vacation trip over in uh, Minnesota, mm-hmm. and this was like during the winter time. It's everything's frozen over, yeah. and we seen people doing these donuts on the lake and stuff. I happened to go out oh there and then. God. So I'm I'm standing out in the lake. My phone starts ringing. I'm like, why is my phone buzzing? I'm like, it's very random. Only time that usually happens is when my cousin hit me up, and they already knew I was out out of town. Yeah. So I was like, there ain't no reason why they will hit me up. So I look, and I still got the app on my phone, the uh, Plenty of Fish. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm getting a mess with Plenty of Fish. I'm thinking it's one of them uh, administrative uh, notifications, notifications <laughs> saying, hey, you got to update something like that. I look, and it's her in my inbox. I'm like. Mm-hmm. It's a lady in my inbox. Oh, okay. <laughs> a lady in my inbox. <laughs> oh dang! It must have been dry. It must have been in a drought, brother. <laughs> hey, look, I I can get into that, but we'll we'll, we'll move past that one. Yeah, it's but, yes. all good though. You was obeying yes. God. Well, was working in the garden. Came, right. Yeah. Being prepared. Well, that's the thing. Like I like I said, I wasn't really doing anything like that anyway. So mm-hmm. when it went off, I was just like, oh, that's very random and new. Mm-hmm. And just the fact that somebody hit me up, which is mm-hmm. definitely different. Praise um, God. <laughs> Amen. During that whole trip, my daddy's like, Who are you talking to? Over cheese and stuff. Up here sending me pictures. I'm sending a picture of me on the trip. Like goofy pictures, though. Like that's, mm-hmm. the, like that's how I got to know his personality. And it's just, it's so I'm seeing all these pictures in the app. And it's so hilarious. I'm like, Okay, he's goofy like me. So this is, this is interesting. This is I, I was not about to hide nothing. I was just yeah. like, Hey, if you like it, you like it. You don't keep mm-hmm. moving. Mm-hmm. Well, that's awesome. So, what about your purity walk with God um, before you met her? How was that? Um, so 
same thing two years prior is when I chose to be abstinent. And okay. I was like, yeah, I, I'm just going to abstain and stay away from any kind of like basically uh, women in sinning. <laughs> women, <laughs> women in sinning. Women in sinning. That's like mm-hmm. Women in sinning. Women in sinning. Oh, it's a Tubi movie. <laughs> a Tubi movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. So okay. I, uh, once I chose, I, and the thing is, I chose that before I actually starting going to church. And so, and, and the crazy part was when I became a member of the church, they had an interview. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> He asked me a question and I was just so happy about you know my my achievement. I was like, I'm absent. He said, We don't need to know all that. <laughs> I'm like, all right, but you, you asked Wait, me you so- told the church that and that was their reaction? Yeah. The, yeah. That's a weird reaction. I mean, yeah. like, praise God, brother. He must be yeah. guilty. You must have convicted him. <laughs> that tends to happen. That tends to happen a That's lot. That's another thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Over I prayed in front of somebody and they should know they go, Oh man, I feel so bad. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. So yeah, that's the question. After the journey, your pur- purity journey. Oh, my purity journey. I mean, that's pretty much it. I was just absent the whole time, all the way into marriage. <laughs> okay, okay. I was absent the whole time. Did, oh, oh about- the men's uh, retreat. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, I went to the men's retreat. Actually, there was a few things that happened during the men's retreat, and this was when we were talking. Mm-hmm. And she was like, "Why are you going to that?" It was random. Yeah. Um. So when I went to the men's retreat, there was two two things that happened. One, uh very significant for me because i'm scared of water (laughs) echo um so i got into a raft and i was in the middle of the 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 river but it was still i was in the middle of the river and i was just like basically just being there and praying and stuff everybody else was over there having fun jumping off the diving board and stuff but my dad seen me he was like what's he doing out there in the, middle? in the middle he's like dj's usually scared of that and no i was at peace had my my good old time mm-hmm. me and god mm-hmm. but anyway so god. from from that i went like right after that i walked off and went to this building it's just random building and they were talking about abstinence mm-hmm. and there was a technique they used oh internet connection um there was a technique they used where you take a rubber band and anytime you think about anything like sexual or anything, you know, where you want to do anything to yourself or, or you think about lust or something like that, you can take the rubber band and pop yourself. Oh, okay. So, That's actually a, a psychology thing. Uh, my parents yes. taught me anytime a negative thought comes, you know, do something to snap yourself out of it, whether you pinch yourself, mm-hmm. snap a rubber band back, you know, and that is snap your mind out of it. And then you replace it with a positive thought. You know, of course, we replace it also with the word of God. Sure. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So my, my, my wrist was red for a little bit. <laughs> okay, that's good. So I guess it was working. <laughs> oh, yeah, it worked. It worked. Um, Made it all the way to marriage. I just know. I remember going on dates with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he had the rubber band on the date. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look, hey, there, there, there's there's one time if, she... if your hand is thin, you cut it off. Cut it off. <laughs> just <laughs> tapping it. Hey, the, this is how, how bad it was. Uh we went on a date. I think she had like a shoulder out or it something like that. Ba- it was when you got baptized. Oh yeah, that's wait that day? Yes. Oh well, I, I th- remember it clearly because I had the dress on and I was hot. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so she had she had she had a little bit of shoulder out. I'm just like, hey, you, you, you gotta put that away. <laughs> put that shoulder away. That's that's what the old school used to teach. They used to be like, ah, oh, sister, sister, put your shawl on. Put your shawl. <laughs> if you come to church, put your arms out. Sister, yeah, put your shawl on. All these, I used to be like. I used to be like, that's weird. How they lusting after the arm? What you gonna do with the arm? Hey, too much skin. Right, right. Mm-hmm. I think it was something. I think I had like a a light sweater or something like that. We had some AC on, but you yeah. Know. But you know that is absolutely okay. You know if yeah. it's if it's gonna cause you to stumble, mm-hmm. say something. You know because we're here something. to help one another. You know, that's so uh, don't important. ever be ashamed of where you're at. You know because yeah. we in this together, trying to live holy. Sometimes mm-hmm. brothers' voices be too deep. I'd be like, man, will he move on? His voice be all deep, <laughs> be like very right, boom, 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 talking. I'm like. <laughs> Right. It's a couple of octaves. Right. Oh my god. It's this beauty supply I like to go to a brother that work there. He sound like yeah. I'd be like, oh, you sound like you should be on the radio. I'd just be talking to him to hear his voice. This voice? Like, okay, I need like, to be on the radio. Down, <laughs> <laughs> so whatever it is to get you there, you know what I'm saying? Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Give exactly. us self control and all that good stuff. 
man don't don't let your voice get there so in other words that's her shoulder that's her shoulder yeah, that's that's her shoulder. Shoulder. you don't have to tell him that yeah. that's one of my shoulders don't tell, got, tell him that that's one of your shoulders you got several <laughs> Oh, it's kind of supposed to be running out of time. We got 10 minutes. So when it cuts cuts off, um, okay. or it says reactivate pro. Let me pay for this for, for um Okay. One okay. second. Oh okay. well, uh, they they actually want me to log in to pay. So we'll just log back on if okay. it cuts off. When it cuts we'll off. Okay. Uh, but fine. did I cut you off? Um what you were uh saying, were you done or or uh oh no, you know, you're good. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I think that was an amazing testimony. You know, I just recently wrote a blog, um, Women Are the Prize, Men Are the Heroes. And the premise of that blog was uh, how God prepares men to be heroes by uh, putting them in a position to be responsible and to uh, do what's necessary to do in order to win the bride is the prize. You know, and we've seen that with Adam and then God brought Eve to her. We saw that with David and then Saul gave him uh, one of her daughters. You know, David was told to go uh, get so many wine skins of um, the uh, Philistine men. And so, so once he did that, he got blessed with his wife. And that's just kind of been the normal thing. I think Samson did something similar to that as well to get his wife. Yeah. So yeah. it's so interesting to see this happening in the future with a current example of a man being prepared, you know, to be yeah. the hero. That's what we call yeah. you all, because you guys are willing to, you guys have the bulk of the responsibility uh, as far as the leadership is concerned in a relationship. The man, man has to step in and take the servant leadership role, just like Jesus Christ did um, with us. He humbled himself. He washed the disciples' feet to teach us to serve one another, you know, because with the man taking the leadership role, the woman, we naturally respond and we naturally want to serve you, you know. So yeah. this is really cool to see it's this good. picture play out. Um, so let's see what the next question is. Hold, give me one second. You're all right. No, that was good. That was a good point. Mm -hmm. Definitely leadership's qualities um, that he showed and showcased for sure for me. It's the serving part. That's what it was. It's, it was a serving part. But ooh, he's serving. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the next question, because you actually answered two of my questions on my list, uh, DJ. Uh, oh, so, cool. Lucretia, so what was your dating experience like um, before him? Had you dated a lot of people, or did you have some some segments or uh, seasons of your life where you were just single for a long period of time and you didn't date? Yes. No. <laughs> so, um, um, I would say that it was, I dated, I dated. But I, he was my first re real relationship, I would say. Um, and that meant like actual, like you met the family, uh, boy, like actually had a title and put that out on social medias, all the things, right? That was, he was the first to ever do that. And um, in the class. And <laughs> in the class. He's so crazy. <laughs> um, and so, yes, I had um, a lot of... Um, of relationships that didn't go nowhere like it was like we started off and it could have lasted almost like three months and then I think majority of the time it was me that was like this can't go no further um there was one particular one where um I had moved to Kansas City uh, you know because I, I was new here and I had uh, met a guy and I thought it was going to be something but it was where I had this imaginary Thing in my head thinking that things were going to happen you know like things were going to progress into something and um it never did and but I held on to that for like two to three years now mind you me and him never even met up you know we we saw each other once um we would text often he and we would text every so often honestly and I would be the one um hold on let me see okay hold on the message came up um I would be the one to always contact him and so I'm thinking like this is where way it's supposed to be this is what I was supposed to to be in and so I would call this that situation shift that I had where okay. I had put myself in a place to where thinking that something was going to happen and it never came through I had put like imaginary things in my head thinking that things were going to go further with him long story short come to find out that um he contacted me sometime after that and um 
And he said, hey, I gotta tell you something. Okay. I said, what? He said, well, um, yeah, well, my ex came into town and I was like, okay, cool. Your ex came into town. Um, and so he said, yeah, we kind of did something. And um, from that, I think, um, not I think, he said, I know I have the big H. Now in my mind, I'm like the big H. What the heck is that? Like <laughs> herpes? Well, I'm I'm going through my mind. I'm like, Not what is big age. what is right? Oh, H I V. Yeah, and he said, oh, yes. Yeah. And he said, I didn't know what that meant. He said, No, no. He had to explain it to me because I was like, Sir, I have no idea what you're talking about. And mm -hmm. so he told me that. And so in my mind, still after that, I'm still like, Well, it's possible we could still be together. Like this can mm -hmm. work. I can mm -hmm. do it. And I'm sure relationships can, you know, in that situation. Yeah. But for me, and I remember I I, I told my dad. And my dad was like, no. <laughs> he, said, mm -hmm. he said, no. Thank God for daddy. Mm -hmm. He said, this is not going to work out. And from that, you know, the desire for him kind of left or whatever. And that was going on because I was holding on to that because that was the only guy that I met here thinking something mm -hmm. was going to happen. And so I kind of had to sever that. And it was kind of, I don't think I did it in the right way, honestly. I kind of, I told him over, I think, text message. <laughs> I didn't, didn't really yeah, tell him, but yeah, hey. he got the point. He's good enough. Um, that's okay. Kind of you were inexperienced. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, exactly. Inex mm -hmm. Inexperienced. And this is why I, this is how I'm able to tell other single women how to go about it because there's different ways I could have handled that even before mm -hmm. getting into, I, there's no way I should even been in that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, in a situation where, you know, he had, it was a lot of things that he had going on, a lot of issues, a lot of things that I would have had to supply him with and help him with, even if we were in a relationship, but mm -hmm. I was willing to commit to that if he said yes to this, but he, mm -hmm. he specifically said, I'm not ready for this. Mm -hmm. I still, I still proceeded to, to try to make something happen. And that's mm -hmm. what we tend to do. You know, yeah, <laughs> that's true. We, we hold on to something. Yeah. But that, that was the, the relationship or excuse me, situationship that I remember um that kind of uh tore me in a bit because I was like what is this like but mm -hmm. it shaped me too it shaped mm -hmm. me a whole lot I got to understand what God really and truly wanted for my life man that is so important uh Lucretia I'm so glad you shared all of that and that you're being so vulnerable um because I feel like so many of us single women we get so much pressure oh, you're single, it means there's something wrong with you. Oh, you're single, it means you're being too picky. Oh, you're single, and then there's another excuse, you know? And so in our mind, I think sometimes it unconsciously trains us. We just got to get married. You know, when we get somebody that's interested in us, we got to try to make this work. And sometimes we're not being completely honest with ourselves about what we, we really want and what we don't want, you know, mm -hmm. because I'm wondering were you really okay with that? Or do you think that could have been some of the low self-esteem and some of the pressure and the things that you were dealing with that, um, with around that time that made you feel like this, you know, has to work or this has to be it, you know? Definitely low self-esteem. It definitely pointed to all the things, all the things I've dealt with as a child, because I chose the bottom of basically the bottom of the litter. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. am I not worth more? Mm -hmm. You know, kind of deal. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm thinking if this is what, if this is what I can get, then I'm mm -hmm. going to settle for that. So I basically mm -hmm. just said, I'm going to settle, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think that's where my journey of really understanding who I am in mm -hmm. God. And that's why I had to, I had to take a step back. I had to get back into prayer all the things, um, find my accountability system. Cause I remember even my friends being like, girl, what, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like what's, yeah. what's going on? What, what is mm -hmm. happening? Mm -hmm. Really dive deep into my sisterhood, my connections, because that kept me. If I didn't, honestly, if I didn't have them, if I didn't have like my, um, I was in ministries at the time, if I didn't have all those things, I, I don't think I would have made the right decisions, but because mm -hmm. I planted myself, I was in church, I was still active. I had friends that, that peeked in and even asked questions and they asked questions and it didn't have to be much. It's just, you asked a simple question. It already convicts you, you know, mm -hmm. it was like, how's that going? Oh, shoot. Yeah. Me and him. what you talk about? Like, you know, so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it definitely, it definitely, um, took me back to that little girl in mm -hmm. me because I'm like, I remember being bullied at a certain age. I remember all these things and it's like, well, I guess I'm not going to find him moving on career, mm -hmm. you know, we talked about mm -hmm. before. Well, I know what to do. Well, 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And so many of us have this, you know, and I think social media exploits people's weaknesses and their vulnerabilities as if that makes them bad people when that's what makes them human. Yeah. And that's what actually would make them a good partner uh, because they do have weaknesses because that shows a need that we yeah. actually do need one another. You know, just like you talked about how you needed your community, you know, yeah. and how your community helped you to make the right decision. You know, I hear certain sides of social media saying stuff like, oh, you know, certain groups of women, they only just focus on their career yeah. as if we're about the money or or women are just about the money and and they're just about independence and career. When a lot of times that is a max to cover up their actual needs and their actual vulnerabilities. So I think the more that we grow in maturity, and this is what we need in the relationship space, is people that are mature, people that are willing to see past the mask that we wear just to get through the day. Because there's a lot of people wearing masks to get through the day. Through the day. Some don't look as bad as others. Some it may yeah. be alcohol, some it may be weed, some it may be, you know, working a lot, you know, uh, some it may be serving a lot. Some people get their identity from serving other people. You know, and, and that looks good, but it may not be healthy. That person may be the loneliest person, you know, and they may just need to talk to somebody, you know. So if we can be mature to enough to look past, you know, some of these things and say, hey, this person may just need a friend and just be kind to that person instead of just warring back and forth at each other, like what's going on online with the social media war, it has got to stop. We need more mature people out here sharing and speaking so we can show up for one another and be there for one another uh, to encourage one another. So yes, I'm loving, loving, loving everything you have to say. Um, Okay. So what were some of the things that you experienced also as a virgin, um, Lucretia, uh, before marriage? Did you ever experience virgin shaming? Um, Or were there any type of thoughts, you know, that came to your mind regularly that you had to overcome? Did you get ghosted because of your decision to practice abstinence? What were some of your experiences? Um, I think I was just afraid to say that I was. Um, (laughs) I was afraid. I think the only people I would share it with was probably my close friends. But even if asked, I probably would dance around it or Mm -hmm. I wouldn't feel confident enough in why I am. You know, I think the first time I remember really sharing it was in college Mm -hmm. and, um, and it was so funny, like all of us, I think the majority of us, my freshman year on our dorm, we all talking about it. Like all of us were virgins Mm -hmm. (laughs) in our dorm room. Now, I don't think all of us were believers, but all of us were just, was all of us were were virgins. But Mm -hmm. I remember as we crept up closer to our senior year, everybody started falling off. (laughs) So, and I was the only one standing, you know, I was the only one standing. Aww. And so it was like, girl, good job. Cause woo, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. And so this was, and this was college. And so, um, and so I don't think, and even in, um, some of the, the guys that I would date, I don't think I, I didn't get ghosted. I think they use that as a way to try to see, okay, uh, okay. She, she abstinent, but I'm gonna try to see what I could do. You know, they tried mm-hmm. that angle and I would still be, be firm and like, nah, like we're we not going there. Now, mm-hmm. mind you, even though I was abstinent does not mean I was totally pure. There were still right. parts mm-hmm. of me and things that I did. I should not have been in his room sleeping. You know what I'm saying? I should mm-hmm. not have went to his apartment late at night. All those things. Mm-hmm. I just never went the whole way. And mm-hmm. so um, a part of me was still com- convicted, even like the walk of shame that I had going back to my dorm room, Mm -hmm. (laughs) going back to my dorm room. It's like six o'clock in the morning and my RAs are looking at me like, girl, you know, he dropped me off. (laughs) uh, And you know, they're not even, Mm -hmm. it's the eyes. It was the eyes. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I'm like, they think I did something, but I didn't, you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so that even dealt with me uh, for years, you know what I'm saying? And so I would say that the journey was very was a roller coaster because yeah. I was like I didn't do nothing but I just still feel this guilt and so that would that would that's where my fight began where I'm like I gotta fight harder it seems like because I I'm out here I could fall like mm-hmm. so I was so close to many occasions where mm-hmm. I knew I shouldn't have been in certain places I knew mm-hmm. I shouldn't have dove into anything 
And um, I still was there, still was a situation. And I, in the Nick, God came in, was like, stop, like stopped, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? And luckily, and I can say, I'm thankful for God's grace and I'm thankful for his protection because there's certain situations I put myself in where I could have been taken advantage of. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And that did not happen. These The guys still respected me to where they didn't go further, even after I told mm -hmm. them to. And so I'm just thankful for that, th that in, over my life too. Mm -hmm. thank god for jesus i know about that protection honey because god will show up and be like stop that as a matter of fact i was in a situation where i didn't hear god speak for a long time you know how you're in the test and when you're taking a test they don't god doesn't really give you a lot of conversation and it's just in real life like in real life when you're in school and you're taking a test unless it's an open book test you know your teacher's not going to give you the answers you know so i hadn't heard from god in a while except for through his word and so I had went on this date with this gentleman and, um, you know, as a matter of fact, the lust had been festering before the day, <laughs> a, a okay, couple of yep. weeks before the date. It's like, you can feel the lust in your loins <laughs> before the date, you know. Not then, in your loins. <laughs> well, look it up if you don't know what it means. <laughs> uh <-oh. laughs> so, then, so then we went on the date and whatnot and, and, um, we had made out and, and stuff like this. This one little piece of hair don't want to stay in place. So, so anyway, we had went out on a date and we had mm -hmm. uh, made out and everything. And yeah. so the brother was fine, fine. Like my type type of fine, which is why the, yeah. the festering had been going on for a couple of weeks, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And so, of course, I know I have to depend upon the Lord to do this thing because yeah. we can't do this thing without the Lord. You know, yeah. so I'm praying to God. I'm like, Lord, you said, uh, what, did, what did you say in your word? Your strength is made perfect in our weakness. Well, I'm yes. weak, Lord Jesus. <laughs> in this area, Lord God, I'm going to need Lord. your help. Because I don't yes. want to get caught up in sin and lust and fornication. And I've been in lust before, Lord, and I don't want to go back to lust because that's hard mm -hmm. to get out of. I'm just telling the Lord all this stuff. This is how I'm praying to him because it's just keep it real. And so yeah. um, the Lord gave me Romans 12, 1 through 2. Um, that talks about, um, I think it talks about, uh, yielding your members, um, to the Lord or something as your reasonable service. Let me look it up. Yeah. Sometimes if, I'd be forgetting these scriptures. Right. I was about to look it up too. Cause I want to say that that's the one I'm thinking of. I think the result of what the Lord was letting me know though. And I, mind you, I hadn't heard from him in a while. Oh, mm -hmm. but he was on this. He was talking to me for sure with the scripture. Mm -hmm. Um, let me know that the situation was too strong for me and, and yeah. basically he was too strong for me in that area, mm -hmm. you know? And so had I continued with him, it would have led to sin. Okay. Romans 12, one through two. Okay. Here it is. Therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and prove what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Mm -hmm. So in other words, God was letting me know that in response to his goodness, that um, I was to continue to offer myself to him and not to get caught up, you know, um, in the situation. So yep. it's like, okay, Lord, well, if I'm going to do this thing, you're going to have to give me the strength you know, to, to continue to honor you because I'm not strong enough by myself, you know? So, yeah. and if I'm going to keep, you know, living as a living sacrifice, you're going to have to help me Lord, you know? Yeah. And so God gave me the strength, he, you know, um, I had went to a church and this brother had passed or had prophesied over me. And he was saying like, you got a decision to make or whatever. So I deleted his number out of my phone, you know, mm -hmm. cause he wasn't consistent calling me anyway. So mm -hmm. I wasn't going to be tempted to call him cause I had got rid of his number. <laughs> Right, you know, right. so that's that pretty much cut everything off, and I didn't really have to deal with it anymore. So it's like when you give yourself to God and you say, Hey, I can't do this, I'm too weak, Lord, I need your help. The Lord will step in and give you help because what the scripture says, God always provides a way out of temptation, He always provides a way of escape. So God right. makes us wait on Him for some stuff when it but when it comes to temptation, He, he show up immediately. With that way of escape over here, he's like over here, <laughs> get mm -hmm. over here. It's safe over mm -hmm. here, 
And that's exactly, exactly. how God is. Um, mm-hmm. And that's how he protects us and helps us mm-hmm. to walk in uh, alignment with him so that we're not getting caught up with uh, guys who don't value us, you know, yeah. or we don't get caught up in the moment of, you know, having sex because we need that intimacy. We need that closeness. We need to feel wanted. We need to feel loved, even though we know it's not real love. But a lot of women yeah. acquiesce to whatever these men want just so they could feel close to someone because a lot of us as women you know, sex for us, it makes us feel close. It makes us feel intimate. It makes us feel safe and wanted and and embraced, you know, by a man, whereas the man may be responding physically, you know, to getting, getting off, um, and so Mm -hmm. forth. And that's how some of these men, uh, perceive love. So yes, good, interesting conversation. I don't even know how we went down that path and that road, but I think this is awesome. Um, but we're going to bring it back to the men, you know, because okay. we got men folk and we got women folk watching us. Yeah, folk. Um, so uh, DJ, um, so what was your experience like uh, growing up as a man? Do you feel like there was pressure for you to lose your virginity? And then what was it that shifted you into that commitment to say, hey, I'm going to be abstinent for two years? Oh, shoot. <laughs> uh, pressure? Yes, definitely pressure. Uh, but I, I hmm. I don't know if I should even explain that one. No, I'll be honest and transparent. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I I lost my virginity at very very young age, oh. an inappropriate age. Oh, was it, was it not like no molestation, no, something like no, that. No, no. Nah, nah. Oh, well, thank God. I mean, I mean, could have been. It could have <laughs> been. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Unknowingly, yeah. You didn't, yeah, you because didn't know what you were doing. I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. Uh, okay. It was a. A girl that was over at the youth center when I was in uh, Okinawa, Japan, and she showed me. And I was just like, oh, okay, Aww. this is different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it didn't help that my brother was showing me uh, <laughs> my mom's porn and stuff, mm-hmm. <laughs> her, her collection. So it was mm-hmm. like I was shown at an early age. Um, but that was like my only activity that I had all the way until like, high school okay Sorry. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but that was my only activity since you know since then and then high school is when I, I had a basically like my girlfriend it was like serious and everything and it, it, like it got to the point to where I, I thought I was feeling bad in school come to find out I was like oh wait a minute no I wasn't I had half days I forgot <laughs> um, but that kind of what led to the uh me and my father uh falling out because of that relationship um Mm -hmm. and then that kind of like put me in like a two-year depression because she had uh cheated on me with somebody and i was like ah so for a while that kind of you went to the church situation with them in front of the church oh yeah 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 yeah, i could tell that that's 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 a part of it Okay, okay um so actually i guess that would be my church hurt yeah um so along with that during that same situation um when I, when I got i didn't get kicked out i had a choice to either stay or leave and i chose to leave i was like Psh, i'm out mm-hmm. um he went and told the church about what happened mm-hmm. and when i went to church like that next sunday or something like that everybody was looking at me like i was the devil oh my god because there was a uh, a lot of the girls up there and i was cool with them but they didn't want to sit next to me. Nobody wanted to talk to me. I was like, what is happening? And then that's when I, I think somebody told me, it was like, yeah, your dad came up here and told everybody, he like, he stood in front of everybody and told everybody. I was like, why would you do something like that? Right. <laughs> like, wow. Hey, wow. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, okay. So since then, it was like, you know, just kind of like falling off from that. Of course, he still tried to talk to me here and there and then, but that was just like, nah. But as far as like uh, relationships, I was like, I did nothing but relationships. It was mm-hmm. never really like, oh, we're going to get in a situation. Now nah, it was like, nah. So I st- I had breaks in between. It wasn't no like serial relationship kind of person. It was more like, hey, you know, you know girlfriend, boyfriend, all right, cool. But I always felt like there was something off. It was never really we equally yoked mm-hmm. because like one person that she didn't believe in God. So I already knew right there. Another person was Mormon. I was like, that's not gonna work. <laughs> she shouldn't even. 
<laughs> uh, yeah. yeah anyway, <laughs> um, one said she was Christian, and I did go to her church, but she was all the way like, I don't know, she was uh, Springfield, and I was in long, long yeah, way, long basically. way, long way. That was a two hour drive, put yeah. it like that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. eventually, that didn't work out either. Um, after that, I was just like, you know what? I'm good by myself. <laughs> it's too much going on. Yeah, a lot. Of, it, I realized like a lot of women that I did date all had some kind of like trauma too. Mm-hmm. So I guess in a way it was kind of like a trauma bond. Mm-hmm. So it was like you know I need to go ahead and focus on myself and build on myself and worry about what I got going on instead of trying to. Well, and the thing was, a lot of times I wasn't even trying to get in relationships. It was just more like in proximity of somebody that liked me. And I was like, yeah, hmm, right, you cool. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, I was just like, you know what? You know, just focus on my relationship with God. I'm, I'm going to do me and, and God, of course, mm-hmm. and see where that takes me. So that's what, what led me to that, um, or to abstinence. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. And and you talked about too about how I think when you you and the um, had told them you were abstinent and then she was, said she was waiting for marriage too and then she still tried to try something or she got mad because you didn't want to try nothing. Oh oh oh, oh. <laughs> no, that was a date. That was oh, a, that was a relationship. Date. That was a date. Okay. okay. So yeah. <laughs> if we talking about dates, that's a different story. I mean, <laughs> so there was one girl I, and we went on several dates. Actually, we was okay. like three dates in mm-hmm. and. Uh, I felt like she put me in the friend zone the last time. I was like, something just automatically just felt like she put me in the friend zone when she left. And right when she like got in the car and she was in the parking lot, I texted her. It was like, did you just put me in the friend zone? She's like, yeah, because yep. you didn't try nothing. It's like, I told you from the beginning. And this was <laughs> actually, this was during the time I had just like accepted being absent. And I told mm-hmm. her about being absent and yeah. she was fine with that. And she was like, cool, you know, me too. But yet you're mad because I wasn't trying nothing with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that didn't make like, no sense. I was like, all right, you good go. You, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I ain't about to be no friend either. So you do your thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. She wasn't the only one though. There was other girls. Was not with the absence part. Just they'll say one thing. And then when you, you talk to them about it, it's like, but you said you, you didn't do that. For it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and some people. Like, I don't talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, some people, they want to be a part of the abstinence journey because they think it's just going to be easier. But being abstinent is not easy. You know, mm-hmm. e- you're know, you going to have some hardness or some pain with each choice that you make, yeah. you know, yeah. but it is beneficial. You know, the consequences of this lifestyle are healthy consequences. You know, they're not harmful, you know, so that that's the benefit. Um so yeah. closing out, uh, what are some words of encouragement, Lucretia, that you would share with other women that are waiting and other virgins as well? And then I'll come back to you, uh, DJ, and have you um, encourage the men. Um, I would say even if you are a virgin, I would say still get to know your body. Like it wasn't very, it wasn't so like, okay, wedding night. Yay. You know, like that. It was like wedding night. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and then even after it was whoa, and I'm just now. Oh, praise God! You know, <laughs> hey man, that's what we want is the whoa. One of my sisters in Christ, she was like, um, because I'm not trying to tell nobody business, but uh, right, right. <laughs> so I ain't gonna say no names about like, but she had got married um mm-hmm. the first time and it didn't work out, you know, okay. so she had a season of singleness after that. Sure. Um, she's like, Russ, I don't know if I can wait the second go go around because it feels really good. Right. <laughs> I'm like, well, do the best you can. I know. <laughs> you know, I ain't judging you. You know, we I all got you. our journey to walk. So. We all got our journey to walk. And yeah. and I and I think it, it, that's and that's the thing, like, um, you'll know, I mean, you'll understand it. And if when your husband, I, I pray that all your husband is will be patient enough to walk with you and to understand where you are. Um, I didn't feel forced or rushed or whatever I wasn't comfortable with, but I think that needs to be talked about. 
Yeah. I think we don't talk about it enough. It wasn't talked about with me. Mm-hmm. Um, it was very, first of all, it was very awkward, you know, to even talk about it with anybody because mm-hmm. everybody knew that you was going to do something you didn't never done done before. So mm-hmm. everybody knew, you know, mm-hmm. and so um, it was just being comfortable with being a woman, mm-hmm. you know, and just knowing like, this is your body. This is, mm-hmm. this is what happens and stuff like that. And so I would say, be comfortable with you. Look, mm-hmm. look at yourself in the mirror, you mm-hmm. know? every piece of you, mm-hmm. you know, do that every mm-hmm. piece of you, from the head to toe mm-hmm. and be comfortable with every piece of you, because that's what he's going to be looking at. Yeah, right? That's right. And if, and if you begin to be, see yourself as beautiful and see every part of you as beautiful, no matter the scars, the, the, whatever, whatever bruise you might have, then that's when you'll know you're becoming to love more of you and honor mm-hmm. you right mm-hmm. before you, mm-hmm. you allow yourself to be honored, not even honored, but just taken by somebody you know, mm-hmm. that is mm-hmm. not your husband. And mm-hmm. so it was honorable. And I would say that it was an act of where I was like, you know what, this is when, when you do it, if you're a virgin and when you have your wedding night, cause I'm, I'm hoping that those who are out there, I'm encouraging you to wait to your wedding night. It will mm-hmm. be glorious. It'll be yeah. like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I waited, you mm-hmm. know, kind of. So, um, but then also know, it's patience in the journey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just pay, give yourself patience within the journey. Mm-hmm. Good, good. And and uh, the Flow app um, is a good app too to, for women to learn about their bodies. Um, so yeah, if you want to sign up for that app, I'm on that app and they give you yes. stuff to read. They teach you about your cycles and your um, hormones and all the different things and different body parts, which I already knew about since I was 12 years old because my parents right. had a book in the house and I just read it. And I was like, this is interesting. <laughs> so you already so, got it. You already got yeah, it too. I'm, with I'm a curious George. I've been reading since yeah. I was a kid. So, you know, yeah. it's yeah. like, mm-hmm, when I hear about stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, DJ, I'm going to have you to encourage uh, the men out there. So the men out there who are distracted, just kind of living aimlessly and doing whatever they're doing and the men that may not be at uh, practicing abstinence, you know, what would you share with them to encourage them um, to walk out a path to be prepared for marriage and a healthy relationship? Well, I'll put it this way. Your, your goal or your main thing should be God first. Mm-hmm. And then, then you should be taking sex off the table because one, when you're, say you're, you are dating someone that's equally yoked to you, um, you'll find out real quick if they are or not without having sex there, without having the lust there. You know, you kind of have the blinders in a way because, you, you know, you want their body and not their mind. Mm-hmm. Um, but once you take that off the table, you, you'll start realizing, like, eh, there's a lot of uh, lying and deceitfulness mm-hmm. <laughs> happening mm-hmm. right now. And not to discourage, but it's more like a lot of men just probably like focus and build on themselves and, you know, go towards God first Mm -hmm. and then find your wife. Mm -hmm. Because you might, you know, be a yes man like I did with God and they should know you leading something. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But but just, you know, like, like I said at the beginning, just take sex off the table, leave it alone, just get away from it. Because all it is 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 a distraction. Yeah. Right. So and I true. also want to interject and add on to that for the men of God, and and I will say the same thing for the women uh, as well. But there's a, a a unique attack on the men of God um, yeah. to cause them not to be able to believe that they can be in a position of marriage, and yes. to cause them not to believe that they can even have a wife to steward who would look at them in a way of respect and yeah. honor. Um, when the truth is, there's a whole lot of women out there uh, who desire that. You know, that's the reason why. Also, I would encourage you turn that social media off, or uh, click uninterested on all of the negative stuff out there, because it makes women look like, oh, women just want money, or I'm not qualified to have a wife if I don't make six figures, which we're not looking for. I don't make six figures, you know. Uh, and a lot of my friends don't make six figures and we're not looking for a man to make six figures, but that is some of the dominant um, information out there for single men and women in the black community, you know, so it has us uh, on this impossible hamster wheel chasing something that we may or may not ever get to 
you know, and to say, oh, once I get to this, then I can go for marriage. When like DJ said, we should be chasing the Lord and seeking the Lord. And the Lord will teach you and train you how to be responsible and how to be prepared for the type of wife that you desire. If you desire a wife who will honor you and look at you with respect, then you have to allow the Holy Spirit to prepare you to be a man um, who attracts that, you know, because that becomes your character and your nature, you know, just like DJ talked about. He wasn't one who liked to talk to a lot of people, but he was placed in a position where he had to grow in that area that he wasn't comfortable in that prepared him for his wife. Now he has to talk to his wife. And he talks very well to me. I would never know if he didn't tell me that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you know. never know. <laughs> never know. So, so seven, seven years ago, different story. <laughs> yeah, see, see what I'm saying, y'all? So it's just a matter of, of seeking first the kingdom of God, like the Bible talks about, Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. So you can't pay attention to all of these relationship gurus because a lot of them don't have a healthy relationship themselves. And that's not to judge them, you know, because I'm not in a relationship. I'm single and I'm still teaching, but I have other fruit, you know, and the Bible talks about judging a free, a tree by its fruit. So if somebody doesn't have any fruit, then yeah, they shouldn't be producing. That's just like when Jesus went to the fig tree and it was supposed to produce figs in its, its season. It was shriveled up. It didn't have no figs. That's why Jesus said, curse be this, this fig tree, because you're not operating in mm -hmm. uh, the way that you were designed to operate. You know, so, uh, you know, a person may not have a relationship at the time, but they, as long as they have some fruit, that's what we're looking for. And that's what mm -hmm. you should look for when you're looking for someone to mentor you and, and to pour into you and to train into you. Do they have any fruit? So for the men of God, have hope that you can experience everything that the Lord has for you. And that doesn't necessarily mean money, you know, because the Lord will make sure your needs are supply supplied. You know, mm -hmm. I remember times where we didn't have uh, money for Christmas and my dad went outside to go to work the next Monday and it was a bag of Christmas gifts on the on, on the front porch. You know, he brought it all in the house. We all getting up early at 530 in the morning on the work day. Like, oh, we got Christmas gifts. Yay. You know, because the Lord is the one who supplies all of our need. You know, a lot of the old school people will tell you how the Lord took care of them. You know, it wasn't a six figure conversation. So where did this come from? It came from the media as a distraction. And we have to not allow ourselves to be so easily uh, distracted. And then the women of God, you know, uh, also, we need to be encouraged to know and to believe that we can have that too, because a lot of times we get discouraged because we are, some of us are waiting, we are doing things the right way, and we're being passed over and we're being ignored, while the women who are loose and taking their clothes off, those are the ones that are getting attention, and those are the ones that have men pursuing them, you know, so it's like painting a picture before us to make us believe that we have to be something other than what God has us to be in order to get what God has us to have. And that's just simply not true. So we encourage everybody. Did anyone else have any last words before we close um, out in prayer? No, that's that's good. Thank you so much for those those words. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. All right, no that. problem. I just feel led to pray. I feel like we should pray. So I'll just yes. open up. And if anyone else wants to lead and interject um, with the Lord, definitely feel free. Uh, Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, for everyone who is watching this and everyone who will read the blog. Um, Father God, I just pray that you would minister to their hearts, minister to all of our hearts, Lord God. Those that have become tired on the journey, Lord God, um, and discouraged, Lord God, we pray that you would lift up their head. Father, we thank you that your word says that you lift up the hung down, down head, Father God. In Jesus' name, Father God, I just pray that you would draw by your spirit um, we pray for every backslider, Lord God, everyone who doesn't have an intimate uh, fellowship with you, an intimate relationship with you, Lord God. We pray that you would begin to draw them to yourself, Lord God. We pray that even you would send people to cross their paths, Lord God, uh, who would help them to walk with you and to know you and to talk with you, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we just thank you that you are good and your mercy, Father, and endures forever, God. We thank you that you are shifting the atmosphere, Lord God. We thank you that you are changing things. You are changing the way that we think, the way that we see things, Lord God, in Jesus' name, so that we can encounter you and so that we can um, walk in everything that you've called us to walk in, Lord God. So we just pray against distraction, God. 
Lord, we pray that you would help us all to renew our minds according to your word, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, God. Amen. Amen. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'll just do it real quick. Father God, we just thank you for wrestling here um, in her journey, God. We thank you that she has become an open book and she's became tra transparent and also bearing fruit. Um, she talked about the fruit that she that she has in doing all that she does with the books and with the podcast, with blogging, with whatever it is, God, that she said yes to you. And we know that because of her yes, she will reap a harvest, God. And we just thank you for all that she's doing and all that she will continue to do. Give her wisdom, give her courage, God, in this season. Help her, Father, as she is still in her abstinent journey, as she's still a single woman, Father, that you would encourage her from day to day, God. And um, and that she will soon meet her husband, Father. We thank you for the opportunity that we had with her, and uh, we thank you for what she's doing in the community. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. You didn't want to put no stank on that, brother DJ. <laughs> Man, y'all can't be with two powerful prayers. I'm like, come on, like, Amen. Brother. I mean, you got Jesus' voice here. You like, Amen. You got it. You got stank on it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Yeah, all right. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. All right, then. All right. I respect your boundary. I respect <laughs> yeah, your boundary. Right, right. <laughs> she was like, okay, let me bow. Okay, wait, no, no, no. I'm not bowing. Nope, I'm not bowing. Not bowing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was oh. funny. <laughs> okay, well, thank you, you guys. I really enjoyed you all so much. Um, so I'll send you all an email um, okay. when we uh, get ready to launch this. All right. Well, thank okay. you so much for the opportunity. This was yeah, great. You. Uh, anytime you, you need us, we here. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> let oh, yeah. us know. I can't wait. I think I, I want to do a panel too. So I might I might see about having you on too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Let me like know. That. Okay, then. Will you have All a good right. one? All right. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.